the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, commonly known as the United Kingdom or Britain, is a sovereign country in northwestern Europe, off the northwestern coast of the European mainland. The United Kingdom includes the island of Great Britain, the northeastern part of the island of Ireland, and many smaller islands within the British Isles. Northern Ireland shares a land border with the Republic of Ireland. Otherwise, the United Kingdom is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, with the North Sea to the east, the English Channel to the south and the Celtic Sea to the southwest, giving it the twelfth longest coastline in the world. The Irish Sea separates Great Britain and Ireland. The total area of the United Kingdom is 93,628 square miles, with an estimated population in 2020 of 67 million. The United Kingdom is a unitary parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy. The monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, has reigned since 1952. The capital and largest city is London, a global city and financial centre with a metropolitan area population of 14 million. The United Kingdom consists of four countries, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Other than England, the constituent countries have their own devolved governments, each with varying powers. The United Kingdom has evolved from a series of annexations, unions and separations of constituent countries over several hundred years. The Treaty of Union between the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland in 1707 formed the Kingdom of Great Britain. Its union in 1801 with the Kingdom of Ireland created the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Most of Ireland seceded from the UK in 1922, leaving the present United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which formally adopted that name in 1927. The nearby Isle of Man, Guernsey and Jersey are not part of the UK, being crown dependencies with the British government responsible for defence and international representation. There are also 14 British overseas territories, the last remnants of the British Empire which, at its height in the 1920s, encompassed almost a quarter of the world's landmass and a third of the world's population, and was the largest empire in history. British influence can be observed in the language, culture and the legal and political systems of many of its former colonies. The United Kingdom has the world's fifth largest economy by nominal gross domestic product, and the tenth largest by purchasing power parity. It has a high income economy and a very high human development index rating, ranking 13th in the world. The UK became the world's first industrialized country and was the world's foremost power during the 19th and early 20th centuries. Today the UK remains one of the world's great powers, with considerable economic, cultural, military, scientific, technological and political influence internationally. It is a recognized nuclear state and is ranked fourth globally in military expenditure. It has been a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council since its first session in 1946. The United Kingdom is a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, the Council of Europe, the G7, the Group of Ten, the G20, the United Nations, NATO, AUKUS, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Interpol, and the World Trade Organization. It was a member state of the European Communities and its successor, the European Union, from its accession in 1973 until its withdrawal in 2020 following a referendum held in 2016. Chapter 1 Etymology and Terminology The Acts of Union 1707 declared that the Kingdom of England and Kingdom of Scotland were united into one kingdom by the name of Great Britain. The term United Kingdom has occasionally been used as a description for the former Kingdom of Great Britain, although its official name from 1707 to 1800 was simply Great Britain. The Acts of Union 1800 united the Kingdoms of Great Britain and Ireland in 1801 forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Following the partition of Ireland, and the independence of the Irish Free State in 1922, which left Northern Ireland as the only part of the island of Ireland within the United Kingdom, the name was changed to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Although the United Kingdom is a sovereign country, England, Scotland, 
Wales and Northern Ireland are also widely referred to as countries. The UK Prime Minister's website has used the phrase countries within a country to describe the United Kingdom. Some statistical summaries, such as those for the 12 nuts 1 regions of the United Kingdom refer to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland as regions. Northern Ireland is also referred to as a province. With regard to Northern Ireland, the descriptive name used can be controversial, with the choice often revealing one's political preferences. The term Great Britain conventionally refers to the island of Great Britain, or politically to England, Scotland and Wales in combination. It is sometimes used as a loose synonym for the United Kingdom as a whole. The term Britain is used both as a synonym for Great Britain, and as a synonym for the United Kingdom. Usage is mixed, the UK government prefers to use the term UK rather than Britain or British on its own website, while acknowledging that both terms refer to the United Kingdom and that elsewhere British government is used at least as frequently as United Kingdom government. The UK Permanent Committee on Geographical Names recognises United Kingdom, UK and UK as shortened and abbreviated geopolitical terms for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in its toponymic guidelines, it does not list Britain but notes that it is only the one specific nominal term Great Britain which invariably excludes Northern Ireland. The BBC historically preferred to use Britain as shorthand only for Great Britain, though the present style guide does not take a position except that Great Britain excludes Northern Ireland. The adjective British is commonly used to refer to matters relating to the United Kingdom, and is used in law to refer to United Kingdom citizenship and matters to do with nationality. People of the United Kingdom use a number of different terms to describe their national identity and may identify themselves as being British, English, Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish, or Irish, or as having a combination of different national identities. The official designation for a citizen of the United Kingdom is British citizen. Chapter 2 – History Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Prior to the Treaty of Union Settlement by anatomically modern humans of what was to become the United Kingdom occurred in waves beginning by about 30,000 years ago. By the end of the region's prehistoric period, the population is thought to have belonged, in the main, to a culture termed Insular Celtic, comprising Britannic Britain and Gaelic Ireland. Prior to the Roman conquest, Britain was home to about 30 indigenous tribes. The largest were the Belgae, the Brigantes, the Ciliaries and the Iceni. Historian Edward Gibbon believed that Spain, Gaul and Britain were populated by the same hardy race of savages, based on the similarity of their manners and languages. The Roman conquest, beginning in 43 AD, and the 400-year rule of southern Britain, was followed by an invasion by Germanic Anglo-Saxon settlers, reducing the Britannic area mainly to what was to become Wales, Cornwall and until the latter stages of the Anglo-Saxon settlement, the Hen Ogled. Most of the region settled by the Anglo-Saxons became unified as the Kingdom of England in the 10th century. Meanwhile, Gaelic speakers in northwest Britain united with the Picts to create the Kingdom of Scotland in the 9th century. In 1066, the Normans and their Breton allies invaded England from northern France. After conquering England, they seized large parts of Wales, conquered much of Ireland and were invited to settle in Scotland, bringing to each country feudalism on the Northern French model, and Norman French culture. The Anglo-Norman ruling class greatly influenced, but eventually assimilated with, each of the local cultures. Subsequent medieval English kings completed the conquest of Wales and made unsuccessful attempts to annex Scotland. Asserting its independence in the 1320 Declaration of Arbroath, Scotland maintained its independence thereafter, albeit in near constant conflict with England. The English monarchs, through inheritance of substantial territories in France and claims to the French crown, were also heavily involved in conflicts in France, most notably the Hundred Years' War, while the kings of Scots were in an alliance with the French during this period. Early modern Britain saw religious conflict resulting from the Reformation and the introduction of Protestant state churches in each country. Wales was fully incorporated into the Kingdom of England, and Ireland was constituted as a kingdom in personal union with the English crown. 
In what was to become Northern Ireland, the lands of the independent Catholic Gaelic nobility were confiscated and given to Protestant settlers from England and Scotland. In 1603, the kingdoms of England, Scotland, and Ireland were united in a personal union when James VI, King of Scots, inherited the crowns of England and Ireland and moved his court from Edinburgh to London. Each country nevertheless remained a separate political entity and retained its separate political, legal, and religious institutions. In the mid 17th century, all three kingdoms were involved in a series of connected wars which led to the temporary overthrow of the monarchy, with the execution of King Charles I, and the establishment of the short lived Unitary Republic of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, and Ireland. During the 17th and 18th centuries, British sailors were involved in acts of piracy, attacking and stealing from ships off the coast of Europe and the Caribbean. Although the monarchy was restored, the interregnum ensured that, unlike much of the rest of Europe, royal absolutism would not prevail, and a professed Catholic could never accede to the throne. The British constitution would develop on the basis of constitutional monarchy and the parliamentary system. With the founding of the Royal Society in 1660, science was greatly encouraged. During this period, particularly in England, the development of naval power and the interest in voyages of discovery led to the acquisition and settlement of overseas colonies, particularly in North America, and the Caribbean. The previous attempts at uniting the two kingdoms within Great Britain in 1606, 1667, and 1689 had proved unsuccessful, the attempt initiated in 1705 led to the Treaty of Union of 1706 being agreed and ratified by both parliaments. Chapter 2 Section 2 Kingdom of Great Britain On 1 May 1707, the Kingdom of Great Britain was formed, the result of Acts of Union being passed by the Parliaments of England and Scotland to ratify the 1706 Treaty of Union and so unite the two kingdoms. In the 18th century, cabinet government developed under Robert Walpole, in practice the first Prime Minister. A series of Jacobite uprisings sought to remove the Protestant House of Hanover from the British throne and restore the Catholic House of Stuart. The Jacobites were finally defeated at the Battle of Culloden in 1746 after which the Scottish Highlanders were brutally suppressed. The British colonies in North America that broke away from Britain in the American War of Independence became the United States of America, recognized by Britain in 1783. British imperial ambition turned towards Asia, particularly to India. Britain played a leading part in the Atlantic slave trade, mainly between 1662 and 1807 when British or British colonial slave ships transported nearly 3.3 million slaves from Africa. The slaves were taken to work on plantations in British possessions, principally in the Caribbean but also North America. Slavery coupled with the Caribbean sugar industry had a significant role in strengthening and developing the British economy in the 18th century. However, Parliament banned the trade in 1807, banned slavery in the British Empire in 1833, and Britain took a leading role in the movement to abolish slavery worldwide through the blockade of Africa, and pressing other nations to end their trade with a series of treaties. The world's oldest international human rights organization, Anti-Slavery International, was formed in London in 1839. Chapter 2 Section 3 from the Union with Ireland to the end of the First World War. The term United Kingdom became official in 1801 when the parliaments of Great Britain and Ireland each passed an act of union, uniting the two kingdoms and creating the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. After the defeat of France at the end of the French Revolutionary Wars and Napoleonic Wars, the United Kingdom emerged as the principal naval and imperial power of the 19th century. Unchallenged at sea, British dominance was later described as Pax Britannica, a period of relative peace among the great powers during which the British Empire became the global hegemon, and adopted the role of global policeman. By the time of the Great Exhibition of 1851, Britain was described as the workshop of the world. From 1853 to 1856, Britain took part in the Crimean War, allied with the Ottoman Empire in the fight against the Russian Empire participating in the naval battles of the Baltic Sea known as the Aland War in the Gulf of Bothnia and the Gulf of Finland, among others. 
The British Empire was expanded to include India, large parts of Africa and many other territories throughout the world. Alongside the formal control it exerted over its own colonies, British dominance of much of world trade meant that it effectively controlled the economies of many regions, such as Asia, and Latin America. Domestically, political attitudes favored free trade and laissez-faire policies and a gradual widening of the voting franchise. During the century, the population increased at a dramatic rate, accompanied by rapid urbanization, causing significant social and economic stresses. To seek new markets and sources of raw materials, the Conservative Party under Israeli launched a period of imperialist expansion in Egypt, South Africa, and elsewhere. Canada, Australia and New Zealand became self-governing dominions. After the turn of the century, Britain's industrial dominance was challenged by Germany and the United States. Social reform and home rule for Ireland were important domestic issues after 1900. The Labour Party emerged from an alliance of trade unions and small socialist groups in 1900, and suffragettes campaigned from before 1914 for women's right to vote. Britain fought alongside France, Russia, and the United States, against Germany and its allies in the First World War. British armed forces were engaged across much of the British Empire and in several regions of Europe, particularly on the Western Front. The high fatalities of trench warfare caused the loss of much of a generation of men, with lasting social effects in the nation and a great disruption in the social order. After the war, Britain received the League of Nations mandate over a number of former German and Ottoman colonies. The British Empire reached its greatest extent, covering a fifth of the world's land surface and a quarter of its population. Britain had suffered 2.5 million casualties and finished the war with a huge national debt. Chapter 2 Section 4, Interwar Years and the Second World War By the mid-1920s most of the British population could listen to BBC radio programmes. Experimental television broadcasts began in 1929 and the first scheduled BBC television service commenced in 1936. The rise of Irish nationalism, and disputes within Ireland over the terms of Irish home rule, led eventually to the partition of the island in 1921. The Irish Free State became independent, initially with Dominion status in 1922, and unambiguously independent in 1931. Northern Ireland remained part of the United Kingdom. The 1928 Act widened suffrage by giving women electoral equality with men. A wave of strikes in the mid-1920s culminated in the General Strike of 1926. Britain had still not recovered from the effects of the war when the Great Depression occurred. This led to considerable unemployment and hardship in the old industrial areas, as well as political and social unrest in the 1930s, with rising membership in communist and socialist parties. A coalition government was formed in 1931. Nonetheless, Britain was a very wealthy country, formidable in arms, ruthless in pursuit of its interests and sitting at the heart of a global production system. After Nazi Germany invaded Poland, Britain entered the Second World War by declaring war on Germany in 1939. Winston Churchill became Prime Minister and head of a coalition government in 1940. Despite the defeat of its European allies in the first year of the war, Britain and its empire continued the fight alone against Germany. Churchill engaged industry, scientists, and engineers to advise and support the government and the military in the prosecution of the war effort. In 1940, the Royal Air Force defeated the German Luftwaffe in a struggle for control of the skies in the Battle of Britain. Urban areas suffered heavy bombing during the Blitz. The Grand Alliance of Britain, the United States and the Soviet Union formed in 1941 leading the Allies against the Axis powers. There were eventual hard-fought victories in the Battle of the Atlantic, the North Africa Campaign and the Italian Campaign. British forces played an important role in the Normandy landings of 1944 and the liberation of Europe, achieved with its allies the United States, the Soviet Union and other allied countries. 
The British Army led the Burma campaign against Japan and the British Pacific Fleet fought Japan at sea. British scientists contributed to the Manhattan Project which led to the surrender of Japan. Chapter 2 Section 5, Post-War 20th Century During the Second World War, the UK was one of the big three powers who met to plan the post-war world, it was an original signatory to the Declaration by United Nations. After the war, the UK became one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council and worked closely with the United States to establish the IMF, World Bank and NATO. The war left the UK severely weakened and financially dependent on the Marshall Plan, but it was spared the total war that devastated Eastern Europe. In the immediate post-war years, the Labour government initiated a radical programme of reforms, which had a significant effect on British society in the following decades. Major industries and public utilities were nationalised, a welfare state was established, and a comprehensive, publicly funded healthcare system, the National Health Service, was created. The rise of nationalism in the colonies coincided with Britain's now much diminished economic position, so that a policy of decolonization was unavoidable. Independence was granted to India, and Pakistan in 1947. Over the next three decades, most colonies of the British Empire gained their independence, with all those that sought independence supported by the UK, during both the transition period and afterwards. Many became members of the Commonwealth of Nations. The UK was the third country to develop a nuclear weapons arsenal, but the new post war limits of Britain's international role were illustrated by the Suez Crisis of 1956. The international spread of the English language ensured the continuing international influence of its literature and culture. As a result of a shortage of workers in the 1950s, the government encouraged immigration from Commonwealth countries. In the following decades, the UK became a more multi-ethnic society than before. Despite rising living standards in the late 1950s and 1960s, the UK's economic performance was less successful than many of its main competitors such as France, West Germany, and Japan. In the decades-long process of European integration, the UK was a founding member of the alliance called the Western European Union, established with the London and Paris conferences in 1954. In 1960 the UK was one of the seven founding members of the European Free Trade Association, but in 1973 it left to join the European Communities. When the EC became the European Union in 1992, the UK was one of the twelve founding member states. The Treaty of Lisbon, signed in 2007, forms the constitutional basis of the European Union since then. From the late 1960s, Northern Ireland suffered communal and paramilitary violence conventionally known as the Troubles. It is usually considered to have ended with the Belfast Good Friday Agreement of 1998. Following a period of widespread economic slowdown and industrial strife in the 1970s, the Conservative government of the 1980s under Margaret Thatcher initiated a radical policy of monetarism, deregulation, particularly of the financial sector and labour markets the sale of state-owned companies, and the withdrawal of subsidies to others. From 1984, the economy was helped by the inflow of substantial North Sea oil revenues. Around the end of the 20th century, there were major changes to the governance of the UK with the establishment of devolved administrations for Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The statutory incorporation followed acceptance of the European Convention on Human Rights. The UK is still a key global player diplomatically and militarily. It plays leading roles in the UN and NATO. Chapter 2 Section 6, 21st Century The UK broadly supported the United States' approach to the war on terror in the early years of the 21st century. Controversy surrounded some of Britain's overseas military deployments, particularly in Afghanistan and Iraq. The 2008 global financial crisis severely affected the UK economy. The Cameron Clegg coalition government of 2010 introduced austerity measures intended to tackle the substantial public deficits which resulted. The devolved Scottish government and UK government agreed for a referendum to be held on Scottish independence in 2014. 
This referendum resulted in the electorate in Scotland voting by 55.3 to 44.7 per cent for Scotland to remain part of the United Kingdom. In 2016, 51.9 per cent of voters in the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. The UK left the EU on 31 January 2020 and completed its withdrawal in full at the end of that year. The COVID-19 pandemic had a major impact on the UK in 2020 and 2021. Chapter 3 – Geography The total area of the United Kingdom is approximately 244,820 square kilometres. The country occupies the major part of the British Isles archipelago and includes the island of Great Britain, the northeastern one-sixth of the island of Ireland and some smaller surrounding islands. It lies between the North Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea with the southeast coast coming within 22 miles of the coast of northern France, from which it is separated by the English Channel. In 1993 10% of the UK was forested, 46% used for pastures and 25% cultivated for agriculture. The Royal Greenwich Observatory in London was chosen as the defining point of the prime meridian in Washington, D.C., in 1884, although due to more accurate modern measurement the meridian actually lies 100 metres to the east of the observatory. The United Kingdom lies between latitudes 49 degrees and 61 degrees north, and longitudes 9 degrees west and 2 degrees east. Northern Ireland shares a 224-mile land boundary with the Republic of Ireland. The coastline of Great Britain is 11,073 miles long. It is connected to continental Europe by the Channel Tunnel, which at 31 miles underwater, is the longest underwater tunnel in the world. England accounts for just over half of the total area of the UK, covering 130,395 square kilometres. Most of the country consists of lowland terrain, with more upland and some mountainous terrain northwest of the Tezex line, including the Lake District, the Pennines, Exmoor, and Dartmoor. The main rivers and estuaries are the Thames, Severn and the Humber. England's highest mountain is Scorfell Pike, in the Lake District. Scotland accounts for just under one-third of the total area of the UK, covering 78,772 square kilometres. This includes nearly 800 islands, predominantly west and north of the mainland, notably the Hebrides, Orkney Islands, and Shetland Islands. Scotland is the most mountainous country in the UK and its topography is distinguished by the Highland Boundary Fault, a geological rock fracture, which traverses Scotland from Arran in the west, to Stonehaven in the east. The fault separates two distinctively different regions, namely the highlands to the north and west and the lowlands to the south and east. The more rugged highland region contains the majority of Scotland's mountainous land, including Ben Nevis which at 1,345 metres, is the highest point in the British Isles. Lowland areas, especially the narrow waste of land between the Firth of Clyde and the Firth of Forth known as the Central Belt, are flatter and home to most of the population including Glasgow, Scotland's largest city, and Edinburgh, its capital and political centre, although upland and mountainous terrain lies within the southern uplands. Wales accounts for less than one-tenth of the total area of the UK, covering 20,779 square kilometres. Wales is mostly mountainous, though South Wales is less mountainous than North and Mid Wales. The main population and industrial areas are in South Wales, consisting of the coastal cities of Cardiff, Swansea, and Newport, and the South Wales valleys to their north. The highest mountains in Wales are in Snowdonia and include Snowdon which, at 1,085 metres, is the highest peak in Wales. Wales has over 2,704 kilometres of coastline. Several islands lie off the Welsh mainland, the largest of which is Anglesey in the northwest. Northern Ireland, separated from Great Britain by the Irish Sea and North Channel, has an area of 14,160 square kilometres, and is mostly hilly. It includes Loch Ney which, at 388 square kilometres, is the largest lake in the British Isles by area. 
The highest peak in Northern Ireland is Schlieve Donard in the Mourne Mountains at 852 metres. The UK contains four terrestrial ecoregions, Celtic broadleaf forests, English lowlands beech forests, North Atlantic moist mixed forests, and Caledon conifer forests. The country had a 2019 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 1. 65 tenths, ranking it 161st globally out of 172 countries. Chapter 3 Section 1, Climate Most of the United Kingdom has a temperate climate, with generally cool temperatures and plentiful rainfall all year round. The temperature varies with the seasons seldom dropping below 0 degrees Celsius or rising above 30 degrees Celsius. Some parts, away from the coast, of upland England, Wales, Northern Ireland and most of Scotland, experience a subpolar oceanic climate. Higher elevations in Scotland experience a continental subarctic climate, and the mountains experience a tundra climate. The prevailing wind is from the southwest and bears frequent spells of mild and wet weather from the Atlantic Ocean, although the eastern parts are mostly sheltered from this wind since the majority of the rain falls over the western regions the eastern parts are therefore the driest. Atlantic currents, warmed by the Gulf Stream, bring mild winters, especially in the west where winters are wet and even more so over high ground. Summers are warmest in the southeast of England and coolest in the north. Heavy snowfall can occur in winter and early spring on high ground, and occasionally settles to great depth away from the hills. United Kingdom is ranked 4 out of 180 countries in the Environmental Performance Index. A law has been passed that UK greenhouse gas emissions will be net zero by 2050. Chapter 4, Government and Politics The United Kingdom, is a unitary state under a constitutional monarchy. Queen Elizabeth II is the monarch and head of state of the UK, as well as 14 other independent countries. These 15 countries are sometimes referred to as Commonwealth realms. The monarch has the right to be consulted, the right to encourage, and the right to warn. The Constitution of the United Kingdom is uncodified and consists mostly of a collection of disparate written sources, including statutes, judge-made case law and international treaties, together with constitutional conventions. The UK Parliament can carry out constitutional reform by passing Acts of Parliament, and thus has the political power to change or abolish almost any written or unwritten element of the Constitution. No sitting Parliament can pass laws that future Parliaments cannot change. The UK is a parliamentary democracy, and a constitutional monarchy. The Parliament of the United Kingdom is sovereign. It is made up of the House of Commons, the House of Lords and the Crown. The main business of Parliament takes place in the two houses, but royal assent is required for a bill to become an Act of Parliament. For general elections, the UK is divided into 650 constituencies, each of which is represented by a Member of Parliament. MPs hold office for up to five years and are always up for re-election in general elections. The Conservative Party, Labour Party and Scottish National Party are, respectively, the current first, second and third largest parties in the House of Commons. The Prime Minister is the head of government in the United Kingdom. Nearly all Prime Ministers have served as First Lord of the Treasury and all Prime Ministers have continuously served as First Lord of the Treasury since 1905, Minister for the Civil Service since 1968 and Minister for the Union since 2019. In modern times, the Prime Minister is, by constitutional convention, an MP. The Prime Minister is appointed by the monarch and their appointment is governed by constitutional conventions. However, they are normally the leader of the political party with the most seats in the House of Commons and hold office by virtue of their ability to command the confidence of the House of Commons. The Prime Minister not only has statutory functions, but is the monarch's principal adviser and it is for them to advise the monarch on the exercise of the royal prerogative in relation to government. In particular, the Prime Minister recommends the appointment of ministers and chairs the cabinet. Chapter 4 Section 1 Administrative Divisions 
The geographical division of the United Kingdom into counties or shires began in England and Scotland in the early Middle Ages and was complete throughout Great Britain and Ireland by the early modern period. Administrative arrangements were developed separately in each country of the United Kingdom, with origins which often predated the formation of the United Kingdom. Modern local government by elected councils, partly based on the ancient counties, was introduced separately, in England and Wales in 1888 Act, Scotland in 1889 Act and Ireland in 1898 Act, meaning there is no consistent system of administrative or geographic demarcation across the United Kingdom. Until the 19th century there was little change to those arrangements, but there has since been a constant evolution of role and function. The organization of local government in England is complex, with the distribution of functions varying according to local arrangements. The upper tier subdivisions of England are the nine regions, now used primarily for statistical purposes. One region, Greater London, has had a directly elected assembly and mayor since 2000 following popular support for the proposal in a referendum. It was intended that other regions would also be given their own elected regional assemblies, but a proposed assembly in the northeast region was rejected by a referendum in 2004. Since 2011, 10 combined authorities have been established in England. Eight of these have elected mayors, the first elections for which took place on 4 May 2017. Below the regional tier, some parts of England have county councils and district councils and others have unitary authorities, while London consists of 32 London boroughs and the City of London. Councillors are elected by the first-past-the-post system in single-member wards or by the multi-member plurality system in multi-member wards. For local government purposes, Scotland is divided into 32 council areas, with wide variation in both size and population. The cities of Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Dundee are separate council areas, as is the Highland Council, which includes a third of Scotland's area, but only just over 200,000 people. Local councils are made up of elected councillors, of whom there are 1,223, they are paid a part-time salary. Elections are conducted by single transferable vote in multi-member wards that elect either three or four councillors. Each council elects a provost, or convener, to chair meetings of the council and to act as a figurehead for the area. Local government in Wales consists of 22 unitary authorities. All unitary authorities are led by a leader and cabinet elected by the council itself. These include the cities of Cardiff, Swansea, and Newport, which are unitary authorities in their own right. Elections are held every four years under the first-past-the-post system. Local government in Northern Ireland has since 1973 been organised into 26 district councils, each elected by single transferable vote. Their powers are limited to services such as collecting waste, controlling dogs and maintaining parks and cemeteries. In 2008 the executive agreed on proposals to create 11 new councils and replace the present system. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Devolved Governments Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland each have their own government or executive, led by a first minister, and a devolved unicameral legislature. England, the largest country of the United Kingdom, has no devolved executive or legislature and is administered and legislated for directly by the UK's government and parliament on all issues. This situation has given rise to the so-called West Lothian question, which concerns the fact that members of parliament from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland can vote, sometimes decisively, on matters that affect only England. The 2013 Mackay Commission on this recommended that laws affecting only England should need support from a majority of English members of Parliament. The Scottish Government and Parliament have wide ranging powers over any matter that has not been specifically reserved to the UK Parliament, including education, healthcare, Scots law, and local government. Their power over economic issues is significantly constrained by an Act of the UK Parliament passed in 2020. In 2012, the UK and Scottish governments signed the Edinburgh Agreement setting out the terms for a referendum on Scottish independence in 2014, which was defeated 55.3% to 44.7%, 
resulting in Scotland remaining a devolved part of the United Kingdom. The Welsh Government and the Senate have more limited powers than those devolved to Scotland. The Senate is able to legislate on any matter not specifically reserved to the UK Parliament through Acts of Senate Cymru. The Northern Ireland Executive and Assembly have powers similar to those devolved to Scotland. The Executive is led by a diarchy representing Unionist and Nationalist members of the Assembly. Devolution to Northern Ireland is contingent on participation by the Northern Ireland Administration in the North-South Ministerial Council, where the Northern Ireland Executive cooperates and develops joint and shared policies with the Government of Ireland. The British and Irish governments cooperate on non-devolved matters affecting Northern Ireland through the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference, which assumes the responsibilities of the Northern Ireland administration in the event of its non-operation. The UK does not have a codified constitution and constitutional matters are not among the powers devolved to Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. Under the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty, the UK Parliament could, in theory, therefore, abolish the Scottish Parliament, Senate or Northern Ireland Assembly. Indeed, in 1972, the UK Parliament unilaterally prorogued the Parliament of Northern Ireland, setting a precedent relevant to contemporary devolved institutions. In practice, it would be politically difficult for the UK Parliament to abolish devolution to the Scottish Parliament, and the Senate, given the political entrenchment created by referendum decisions. The political constraints placed upon the UK Parliament's power to interfere with devolution in Northern Ireland are even greater than in relation to Scotland and Wales, given that devolution in Northern Ireland rests upon an international agreement with the Government of Ireland. The UK Parliament restricts the three devolved Parliament's legislative competence in economic areas, through an Act passed in 2020. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Dependencies the United Kingdom, has sovereignty over 17 territories which do not form part of the United Kingdom itself, 14 British Overseas Territories and 3 Crown Dependencies. The 14 British Overseas Territories are remnants of the British Empire, Anguilla, Bermuda, the British Antarctic Territory, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, the Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, Montserrat, St. Helena, Ascension and Tristan da Cunha, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Pitcairn Islands, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, and Akrotiri, and Decalia on the island of Cyprus. British claims in Antarctica have limited international recognition. Collectively Britain's overseas territories encompass an approximate land area of 480,000 square nautical miles, with a total population of approximately 250,000. The overseas territories also give the UK the world's fifth largest exclusive economic zone at 6,805,586 square kilometres. A 1999 UK government white paper stated that, overseas territories are British for as long as they wish to remain British. Britain has willingly granted independence where it has been requested, and we will continue to do so where this is an option. Self-determination is also enshrined in the constitutions of several overseas territories and three have specifically voted to remain under British sovereignty. The Crown dependencies are possessions of the Crown, as opposed to overseas territories of the UK. They comprise three independently administered jurisdictions, the Channel Islands of Jersey and Guernsey in the English Channel, and the Isle of Man in the Irish Sea. By mutual agreement, the British government manages the island's foreign affairs and defence and the UK Parliament, has the authority to legislate on their behalf. Internationally, they are regarded as territories for which the United Kingdom, is responsible. The power to pass legislation affecting the islands ultimately rests with their own respective legislative assemblies, with the assent of the Crown. Since 2005 each Crown Dependency has had a Chief Minister as its Head of Government. Chapter 4 Section 4, Law and Criminal Justice The United Kingdom does not have a single legal system as Article 19 of the 1706 Treaty of Union provided for the continuation of Scotland's separate legal system. Today the UK has three distinct systems of law, English law, 
Northern Ireland law and Scots law. A new Supreme Court of the United Kingdom came into being in October 2009 to replace the Appellate Committee of the House of Lords. The Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, including the same members as the Supreme Court, is the highest court of appeal for several independent Commonwealth countries, the British Overseas Territories and the Crown Dependencies. Both English law, which applies in England and Wales, and Northern Ireland law are based on common law principles. The essence of common law is that, subject to statute, the law is developed by judges in courts, applying statute, precedent and common sense to the facts before them to give explanatory judgments of the relevant legal principles, which are reported and binding in future similar cases. The Courts of England and Wales are headed by the Senior Courts of England and Wales, consisting of the Court of Appeal, the High Court of Justice and the Crown Court. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the land for both criminal and civil appeal cases in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, and any decision it makes is binding on every other court in the same jurisdiction, often having a persuasive effect in other jurisdictions. Scots law is a hybrid system based on both common law and civil law principles. The chief courts are the Court of Session, for civil cases, and the High Court of Justiciary, for criminal cases. The Supreme Court of the United Kingdom serves as the highest court of appeal for civil cases under Scots law. Sheriff courts deal with most civil and criminal cases including conducting criminal trials with a jury, known as Sheriff Solemn Court, or with a sheriff and no jury, known as Sheriff Summary Court. The Scots legal system, is unique in having three possible verdicts for a criminal trial, guilty, not guilty and not proven. Both not guilty and not proven result in an acquittal. Crime in England and Wales increased in the period between 1981 and 1995, though since that peak there has been an overall fall of 66% in recorded crime from 1995 to 2015, according to crime statistics. The prison population of England and Wales has increased to 86,000 giving England and Wales the highest rate of incarceration in Western Europe at 148 per 100,000. Her Majesty's Prison Service, which reports to the Ministry of Justice, manages most of the prisons within England and Wales. The murder rate in England and Wales has stabilised in the first half of the 2010s with a murder rate around 1 per 100,000 which is half the peak in 2002 and similar to the rate in the 1980s crime in Scotland fell slightly in 2014 to 2015 to its lowest level in 39 years in with 59 killings for a murder rate of 1.1 per 100,000. Scotland's prisons are overcrowded but the prison population is shrinking. Chapter 4 Section 5, Foreign Relations The UK is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, a member of NATO, AUKUS, the Commonwealth of Nations, the G7 Finance Ministers, the G7 Forum, the G20, the OECD, the WTO, the Council of Europe and the US. The UK is said to have a special relationship with the United States and a close partnership with France, the Entente Cordiale, and shares nuclear weapons technology with both countries, the Anglo-Portuguese alliance is considered to be the oldest binding military alliance in the world. The UK is also closely linked with the Republic of Ireland, the two countries share a common travel area and cooperate through the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference, and the British-Irish Council. Britain's global presence and influence is further amplified through its trading relations, foreign investments, official development assistance and military engagements. Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, all of which are former colonies of the British Empire which share Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state, are the most favourably viewed countries in the world by British people. Chapter 4 Section 6, Military Her Majesty's Armed Forces consist of three professional service branches, the Royal Navy and Royal Marines, the British Army and the Royal Air Force. The armed forces of the United Kingdom are managed by the Ministry of Defence and controlled by the Defence Council, chaired by the Secretary of State for Defence. The Commander-in-Chief is the British monarch, to whom members of the forces swear an oath of allegiance. The armed forces are charged with protecting the UK and its overseas territories, 
promoting the UK's global security interests and supporting international peacekeeping efforts. They are active and regular participants in NATO, including the Allied Rapid Reaction Corps, the Five Power Defense Arrangements, RIMPAC and other worldwide coalition operations. Overseas garrisons and facilities are maintained in Ascension Island, Bahrain, Belize, Brunei, Canada, Cyprus, Diego Garcia, the Falkland Islands, Germany, Gibraltar, Kenya, Oman, Qatar, and Singapore. The British Armed Forces played a key role in establishing the British Empire as the dominant world power in the 18th, 19th, and early 20th centuries. By emerging victorious from conflicts, Britain has often been able to decisively influence world events. Since the end of the British Empire, the UK has remained a major military power. Following the end of the Cold War, defence policy has a stated assumption that the most demanding operations will be undertaken as part of a coalition. According to sources which include the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute and the International Institute for Strategic Studies, the UK has either the fourth or the fifth highest military expenditure. Total defence spending amounts to 2.0% of national GDP. Chapter 5 Economy Chapter 5 Section 1 Overview The UK has a partially regulated market economy. Based on market exchange rates, the UK is today the fifth largest economy in the world and the second largest in Europe after Germany. Home Treasury, led by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, is responsible for developing and executing the government's public finance policy and economic policy. The Bank of England is the UK's central bank and is responsible for issuing notes and coins in the nation's currency, the pound sterling. Banks in Scotland and Northern Ireland retain the right to issue their own notes, subject to retaining enough Bank of England notes in reserve to cover their issue. The pound sterling is the world's fourth largest reserve currency. Since 1997 the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, headed by the Governor of the Bank of England, has been responsible for setting interest rates at the level necessary to achieve the overall inflation target for the economy that is set by the Chancellor each year. The UK service sector makes up around 79% of GDP. London is one of the world's largest financial centres, ranking second in the world, behind New York City, in the Global Financial Centres Index in 2020. London also has the largest city GDP in Europe. Edinburgh ranks 17th in the world, and 6th in Western Europe in the Global Financial Centres Index in 2020. Tourism is very important to the British economy, with over 27 million tourists arriving in 2004, the United Kingdom is ranked as the 6th major tourist destination in the world and London, has the most international visitors of any city in the world. The creative industries accounted for 7% GVA in 2005 and grew at an average of 6% per annum between 1997 and 2005. Following the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the European Union, the functioning of the UK internal economic market is enshrined by the United Kingdom Internal Market Act 2020 which ensures trade in goods and services continues without internal barriers across the four countries of the United Kingdom. The Industrial Revolution started in the UK, with an initial concentration on the textile industry, followed by other heavy industries such as shipbuilding, coal mining and steelmaking. British merchants, shippers and bankers developed overwhelming advantage over those of other nations allowing the UK to dominate international trade in the 19th century. As other nations industrialised, coupled with economic decline after two world wars, the United Kingdom began to lose its competitive advantage and heavy industry declined, by degrees, throughout the 20th century. Manufacturing remains a significant part of the economy but accounted for only 16.7% of national output in 2003. The automotive industry employs around 800,000 people, with a turnover in 2015 of £70 billion, generating £34.6 billion of exports. In 2015, the UK produced around 1.6 million passenger vehicles and 94,500 commercial vehicles. The UK is a major centre for engine manufacturing, in 2015 around 2.4 million engines were produced. 
The UK motorsport industry employs around 41,000 people, comprises around 4,500 companies and has an annual turnover of around £6 billion. The aerospace industry of the UK is the second or third largest national aerospace industry in the world depending upon the method of measurement, and has an annual turnover of around £30 billion. The AE Systems plays a critical role in some of the world's biggest defense aerospace projects. In the UK, the company makes large sections of the Typhoon Eurofighter and assembles the aircraft for the Royal Air Force. It is also a principal subcontractor on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the world's largest single defense project, for which it designs and manufactures a range of components. It also manufactures the Hawk the world's most successful jet training aircraft. Airbus UK also manufactures the wings for the A400M military transporter. Rolls-Royce is the world's second-largest aero engine manufacturer. Its engines power more than 30 types of commercial aircraft and it has more than 30,000 engines in service in the civil and defence sectors. The UK space industry was worth £9.1 billion in 2011, and employed 29,000 people. It is growing at a rate of 7.5% annually, according to its umbrella organisation, the UK Space Agency. In 2013, the British government pledged £60 million to the Skylon project, this investment will provide support at a crucial stage to allow a full-scale prototype of the Sabre engine to be built. The pharmaceutical industry plays an important role in the UK economy and the country has the third highest share of global pharmaceutical R&D expenditures. Agriculture is intensive, highly mechanized and efficient by European standards, producing about 60% of food needs with less than 1.6% of the labor force. Around two-thirds of production is devoted to livestock, one-third to arable crops. The UK retains a significant, though much reduced fishing industry. It is also rich in a number of natural resources including coal, petroleum, natural gas, tin, limestone, iron ore, salt, clay, chalk, gypsum, lead, silica and an abundance of arable land. In 2020, coronavirus lockdown measures caused the UK economy to suffer its biggest slump on record, shrinking by 20.4% between April and June compared to the first three months of the year, to push it officially into recession for the first time in 11 years. The UK has an external debt of $9.6 trillion, which is the second highest in the world after the US. As a percentage of GDP, external debt is 408%, which is the third highest in the world after Luxembourg and Iceland. Chapter 5 Section 2 science and technology. England and Scotland were leading centres of the scientific revolution from the 17th century. The United Kingdom led the Industrial Revolution from the 18th century, and has continued to produce scientists and engineers credited with important advances. Major theorists from the 17th and 18th centuries include Isaac Newton, whose laws of motion and illumination of gravity have been seen as a keystone of modern science, from the 19th century Charles Darwin, whose theory of evolution by natural selection was fundamental to the development of modern biology, and James Clerk Maxwell, who formulated classical electromagnetic theory, and more recently Stephen Hawking, who advanced major theories in the fields of cosmology, quantum gravity, and the investigation of black holes. Major scientific discoveries from the 18th century include hydrogen by Henry Cavendish, from the 20th century penicillin by Alexander Fleming, and the structure of DNA, by Francis Crick and others. Famous British engineers and inventors of the Industrial Revolution include James Watt, George Stevenson, Richard Arkwright, Robert Stevenson, and Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Other major engineering projects and applications by people from the UK include the steam locomotive, developed by Richard Trevithick and Andrew Vivian, from the 19th century the electric motor by Michael Faraday, the first computer designed by Charles Babbage, the first commercial electrical telegraph by William Fothergill Cook and Charles Wheatstone, the incandescent light bulb by Joseph Swan, and the first practical telephone, patented by Alexander Graham Bell.
and in the 20th century the world's first working television system by John Logie Baird and others, the jet engine by Frank Whittle, the basis of the modern computer by Alan Turing, and the World Wide Web by Tim Berners-Lee. Scientific research and development remains important in British universities, with many establishing science parks to facilitate production and cooperation with industry. Between 2004 and 2000, and 8 the UK produced 7% of the world's scientific research papers and had an 8% share of scientific citations, the third and second highest in the world. Scientific journals produced in the UK include Nature, the British Medical Journal and The Lancet. The United Kingdom was ranked fourth in the Global Innovation Index 2020, up from fifth in 2019. Chapter 5 Section 3 – Transport a radial road network totals 29,145 miles of main roads, 2,173 miles of motorways and 213,750 miles of paved roads. The M25, encircling London, is the largest and busiest bypass in the world. In 2009 there were a total of 34 million licensed vehicles in Great Britain. The rail network in the UK is the oldest such network in the world. The system consists of five high-speed main lines, which radiate from London to the rest of the country, augmented by regional rail lines and dense commuter networks within the major cities. High-speed one is operationally separate from the rest of the network. The world's first passenger railway running on steam was the Stockton and Darlington Railway, opened in 1825. Just under five years later the world's first intercity railway was the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, designed by George Stevenson. The network grew rapidly as a patchwork of hundreds of separate companies during the Victorian era. The UK has a railway network of 10,072 miles in Great Britain and 189 miles in Northern Ireland. Railways in Northern Ireland are operated by NE Railways, a subsidiary of state owned Translink. In Great Britain, the British Rail Network was privatised between 1994 and 1997 which was followed by a rapid rise in passenger numbers. The UK was ranked 8th among national European rail systems in the 2017 European Railway Performance Index assessing intensity of use, quality of service and safety. Network Rail owns and manages most of the fixed assets. HS2, a new high-speed railway line, is estimated to cost £56 billion. Crossrail, under construction in London, is Europe's largest construction project with a £15 billion projected cost. In the year from October 2009 to September 2010, UK airports handled a total of 211.4 million passengers. In that period, the three largest airports were London Heathrow Airport, Gatwick Airport, and London Stansted Airport. London Heathrow Airport, located 15 miles west of the capital, has the most international passenger traffic of any airport in the world, and is the hub for the UK flag carrier British Airways, as well as Virgin Atlantic. Chapter 5 Section 4 – Energy In 2006, the UK was the world's ninth largest consumer of energy and the fifteenth largest producer. The UK is home to a number of large energy companies, including two of the six oil and gas supermajors, BP and Shell. In 2013, the UK produced 914,000 barrels per day of oil and consumed 1,507,000 barrels. D. Production is now in decline, and the UK has been a net importer of oil since 2005. In 2010, the UK had around 3.1 billion barrels of proven crude oil reserves, the largest of any EU member state. In 2009, the UK was the 13th largest producer of natural gas in the world and the largest producer in the EU. Production is now in decline and the UK has been a net importer of natural gas since 2004. Coal production played a key role in the UK economy in the 19th and 20th centuries. In the mid 1970s, 130 million tons of coal were produced annually not falling below 100 million tons until the early 1980s. 
During the 1980s and 1990s the industry was scaled back considerably. In 2011, the UK produced 18.3 million tonnes of coal. In 2005 it had proven recoverable coal reserves of 171 million tonnes. The UK Coal Authority has stated there is a potential to produce between 7 billion tonnes and 16 billion tonnes of coal through underground coal gasification or fracking, and that, based on current UK coal consumption, such reserves could last between 200 and 400 years. Environmental and social concerns have been raised over chemicals getting into the water table and minor earthquakes damaging homes. In the late 1990s, nuclear power plants contributed around 25% of total annual electricity generation in the UK, but this has gradually declined as old plants have been shut down and aging related problems affect plant availability. In 2012, the UK had 16 reactors normally generating about 19% of its electricity. All but one of the reactors will be retired by 2023. Unlike Germany and Japan, the UK intends to build a new generation of nuclear plants from about 2018. The total of all renewable electricity sources provided for 38.9% of the electricity generated in the United Kingdom in the third quarter of 2019, producing 28.8 TWh of electricity. The UK is one of the best sites in Europe for wind energy, and wind power production is its fastest growing supply, in 2019 it generated almost 20% of the UK's total electricity. Chapter 5 Section 5, Water Supply and Sanitation Access to improved water supply and sanitation in the UK is universal. It is estimated that 96.7% of households are connected to the sewer network. According to the Environment Agency, total water abstraction for public water supply in the UK was 16,406 megalitres per day in 2007. In England and Wales water and sewerage services are provided by 10 private regional water and sewerage companies and 13 mostly smaller private water-only companies. In Scotland, water and sewerage services are provided by a single public company, Scottish Water. In Northern Ireland water and sewerage services are also provided by a single public entity, Northern Ireland Water. Chapter 6, Demographics A census is taken simultaneously in all parts of the UK every 10 years. In the 2011 census the total population of the United Kingdom was 63,181,775. It is the fourth largest in Europe, the fifth largest in the Commonwealth and the 22nd largest in the world. In mid-2014 and mid-2015 net long-term international migration contributed more to population growth. In mid-2012 and mid-2013 natural change contributed the most to population growth. Between 2001 and 2011 the population increased by an average annual rate of approximately 0.7%. This compares to 0.3% per year in the period 1991-2001 and 0.2% in the decade 1981-1991. The 2011 census also showed that, over the previous 100 years, the proportion of the population aged 0 to 14 fell from 31% to 18%, and the proportion of people aged 65 and over rose from 5 to 16%. In 2018 the median age of the UK population was 41.7 years. England's population in 2011 was 53 million, representing some 84% of the UK total. It is one of the most densely populated countries in the world, with 420 people resident per square kilometre in mid-2015, with a particular concentration in London and the South East. The 2011 census put Scotland's population at 5.3 million, Wales at 3.06 million and Northern Ireland at 1.81 million. In 2017 the average total fertility rate across the UK was 1.74 children born per woman. While a rising birth rate is contributing to population growth, it remains considerably below the baby boom peak of 2.95 children per woman in 1964, or the high of 6.02 children born per woman in 1815, 
below the replacement rate of 2.1, but higher than the 2001 record low of 1.63. In 2011, 47.3% of births in the UK were to unmarried women. The Office for National Statistics published a bulletin in 2015 showing that, out of the UK population aged 16 and over, 1.7% identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual, 4.5% of respondents responded with other, I don't know, or did not respond. The number of transgender people in the UK was estimated to be between 65,000 and 300,000 by research between 2001 and 2008. Chapter 6, Section 1, Ethnic Groups Historically, indigenous British people were thought to be descended from the various ethnic groups that settled there before the 12th century, the Celts, Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Norse and the Normans. Welsh people could be the oldest ethnic group in the UK. A 2006 genetic study shows that more than 50% of England's gene pool contains Germanic Y chromosomes. Another 2005 genetic analysis indicates that about 75% of the traceable ancestors of the modern British population had arrived in the British Isles by about 6,200 years ago, at the start of the British Neolithic or Stone Age and that the British broadly share a common ancestry with the Basque people. The UK has a history of non-white immigration with Liverpool having the oldest black population in the country dating back to at least the 1730s during the period of the African slave trade. During this period it is estimated the Afro-Caribbean population of Great Britain was 10,000 to 15,000 which later declined due to the abolition of slavery. The UK also has the oldest Chinese community in Europe, dating to the arrival of Chinese seamen in the 19th century. In 1950 there were probably fewer than 20,000 non-white residents in Britain, almost all born overseas. In 1951 there were an estimated 94,500 people living in Britain who had been born in South Asia, China, Africa and the Caribbean, just under 0.2% of the UK population. By 1961 this number had more than quadrupled to 384,000, just over 0.7% of the United Kingdom population since 1948 substantial immigration from Africa, the Caribbean and South Asia has been a legacy of ties forged by the British Empire. Migration from new EU member states in Central and Eastern Europe since 2004 has resulted in growth in these population groups, although some of this migration has been temporary. Since the 1990s, there has been substantial diversification of the immigrant population, with migrants to the UK coming from a much wider range of countries than previous waves, which tended to involve larger numbers of migrants coming from a relatively small number of countries. Academics have argued that the ethnicity categories employed in British national statistics, which were first introduced in the 1991 census, involve confusion between the concepts of ethnicity and race. In 2011, 87.2% of the UK population identified themselves as white, meaning 12.8% of the UK population identify themselves as of one of number of ethnic minority groups. In the 2001 census, this figure was 7.9% of the UK population. Because of differences in the wording of the census forms used in England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, Data on the other white group is not available for the UK as a whole, but in England and Wales this was the fastest growing group between the 2001 and 2011 censuses, increasing by 1.1 million. Amongst groups for which comparable data is available for all parts of the UK level, the other Asian category increased from 0.4% to 1.4% of the population between 2001 and 2011 while the mixed category rose from 1.2% to 2%. Ethnic diversity varies significantly across the UK. 30.4% of London's population and 37.4% of Leicester's was estimated to be non-white in 2005, whereas less than 5% of the populations of North East England, Wales and the South West were from ethnic minorities, according to the 2001 census. In 2016, 31.4% of primary and 27.9% of secondary pupils at state schools in England, were members of an ethnic minority. 
The 1991 census was the first UK census to have a question on ethnic group. In the 1991 UK census 94.1% of people reported themselves as being white British, white Irish or white other with 5.9% of people reporting themselves as coming from other minority groups. Chapter 6, Section 2, Languages The UK's de facto official language is English. It is estimated that 95% of the UK's population are monolingual English speakers. 5.5% of the population are estimated to speak languages brought to the UK, as a result of relatively recent immigration. South Asian languages are the largest grouping which includes Punjabi, Urdu, Bengali, Sileti, Hindi, and Gujarati. According to the 2011 census, Polish has become the second largest language spoken in England, and has 546,000 speakers. In 2019, some three quarters of a million people spoke little or no English. Three indigenous Celtic languages are spoken in the UK Welsh, Irish, and Scottish Gaelic. Cornish, which became extinct as a first language in the late 18th century, is subject to revival efforts and has a small group of second language speakers. In the 2011 census, approximately one-fifth of the population of Wales said they could speak Welsh, an increase from the 1991 census. In addition, it is estimated that about 200,000 Welsh speakers live in England. In the same census in Northern Ireland 167,487 people stated that they had some knowledge of Irish, almost exclusively in the nationalist population. Over 92,000 people in Scotland have some Gaelic language ability, including 72% of those living in the Outer Hebrides. The number of children being taught either Welsh or Scottish Gaelic is increasing. Among emigrant descended populations some Scottish Gaelic is still spoken in Canada, and Welsh in Patagonia, Argentina. Scots, a language descended from early Northern Middle English, has limited recognition alongside its regional variant, Ulster Scots in Northern Ireland, without specific commitments to protection and promotion. As of April 2020, there are said to be around 151,000 users of British Sign Language, a sign language used by deaf people, in the UK. It is compulsory for pupils to study a second language up to the age of 14 in England. French and German are the two most commonly taught second languages in England and Scotland. All pupils in Wales are either taught Welsh as a second language up to age 16, or are taught in Welsh as a first language. Chapter 6, Section 3, Religion Forms of Christianity have dominated religious life in what is now the United Kingdom for over 1,400 years. Although a majority of citizens still identify with Christianity in many surveys, regular church attendance has fallen dramatically since the middle of the 20th century, while immigration and demographic change have contributed to the growth of other faiths, most notably Islam. This has led some commentators to variously describe the UK as a multi-faith, secularized, or post-Christian society. In the 2001 census, 71.6% of all respondents indicated that they were Christians, with the next largest faiths being Islam, Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Buddhism, and all other religions. 15% of respondents stated that they had no religion, with a further 7% not stating a religious preference. A tier fund survey in 2007 showed only 1 in 10 Britons actually attend church weekly. Between the 2001 and 2011 census there was a decrease in the number of people who identified as Christian by 12%, whilst the percentage of those reporting no religious affiliation doubled. This contrasted with growth in the other main religious group categories, with the number of Muslims increasing by the most substantial margin to a total of about 5%. The Muslim population has increased from 1.6 million in 2000, and 1 to 2.7 million in 2011, making it the second largest religious group in the United Kingdom. In a 2016 survey conducted by BSA on religious affiliation, 53% of respondents indicated no religion, while 41% indicated they were Christians, followed by 6% who affiliated with other religions. 
among Christians adherents to the Church of England constituted 15%, Catholic Church 9%, and other Christians, 17%. 71% of young people aged 1824 said they had no religion. The Church of England is the established church in England. It retains a representation in the UK Parliament, and the British monarch is its supreme governor. In Scotland, the Church of Scotland is recognised as the national church. It is not subject to state control, and the British monarch is an ordinary member required to swear an oath to maintain and preserve the Protestant religion and Presbyterian Church government upon his or her accession. The Church in Wales was disestablished in 1920 and, as the Church of Ireland was disestablished in 1870 before the partition of Ireland, there is no established Church in Northern Ireland. Although there are no UK-wide data in the 2001 census on adherence to individual Christian denominations, it has been estimated that 62% of Christians are Anglican, 13.5% Catholic, 6% Presbyterian, and 3.4% Methodist, with small numbers of other Protestant denominations such as Plymouth Brethren, and Orthodox Churches. Chapter 6, Section 4, Migration The United Kingdom, has experienced successive waves of migration. The Great Famine in Ireland, then part of the United Kingdom, resulted in perhaps a million people migrating to Great Britain. Throughout the 19th century a small population of 28,644 German immigrants built up in England and Wales. London held around half of this population, and other small communities existed in Manchester, Bradford and elsewhere. The German immigrant community was the largest group until 1891, when it became second to Russian Jews. After 1881, Russian Jews suffered bitter persecutions and two million left the Russian Empire by 1914. Around 120,000 settled permanently in Britain, becoming the largest ethnic minority from outside the British Isles, this population had increased to 370,000 by 1938. Unable to return to Poland at the end of World War II, over 120,000 Polish veterans remained in the UK permanently. After the Second World War, many people immigrated from colonies and former colonies in the Caribbean, and Indian subcontinent, as a legacy of empire or driven by labor shortages. In 1841, 0.25% of the population of England and Wales was born in a foreign country, increasing to 1.5% by 1901, 2.6% by 1931 and 4.4% in 1951. In 2014 the immigration net increase was 318,000, immigration was at 641,000, up from 526,000 in 2013, while the number of emigrants leaving for over a year was 323,000. A recent migration trend has been the arrival of workers from the new EU member states in Eastern Europe, known as the A8 countries. In 2011, citizens of new EU member states made up 13% of immigrants. The UK applied temporary restrictions to citizens of Romania and Bulgaria, which joined the EU in January 2007. Research conducted by the Migration Policy Institute for the Equality and Human Rights Commission suggests that, between May 2004 and September 2009, 1.5 million workers migrated from the new EU member states to the UK, most of them Polish. Many subsequently returned home, resulting in a net increase in the number of nationals of the new member states in the UK. The late 2000s recession in the UK reduced economic incentive for Poles to migrate to the UK, making migration temporary and circular. The proportion of foreign-born people in the UK remains slightly below that of many other European countries. Immigration is now contributing to a rising population, with arrivals and UK-born children of migrants accounting for about half of the population increase between 1991 and 2001. 27% of UK live births in 2014 were to mothers born outside the UK, according to official statistics released in 2015. The ONS reported that net migration rose from 2009 to 2010 by 21% 21 to 239,000. In 2013, 
approximately 208,000 foreign nationals were naturalized as British citizens, the highest number since 1962. This figure fell to around 125,800 in 2014. Between 2009 and 2013, the average British citizenships granted annually was 195,800. The most common previous nationalities of those naturalized in 2014 were India, Pakistan, the Philippines, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Nepal, China, South Africa, Poland, and Somalia. The total number of grants of settlement, which confer permanent residence in the UK but not citizenship, was approximately 154,700 in 2013, higher than the previous two years. In 2008, the British government introduced a points-based immigration system for immigration from outside the European Economic Area to replace former schemes, including the Scottish Government's Fresh Talent Initiative. In June 2010 a temporary limit on immigration from outside the EU was introduced, aiming to discourage applications before a permanent cap was imposed in April 2011. Emigration was an important feature of British society in the 19th century. Between 1815 and 1930, around 11.4 million people emigrated from Britain and 7.3 million from Ireland. Estimates show that by the end of the 20th century, some 300 million people of British and Irish descent were permanently settled around the globe. Today, at least 5.5 million UK-born people live abroad, mainly in Australia, Spain, the United States and Canada. Chapter 6, Section 5, Education Education in the United Kingdom is a devolved matter, with each country having a separate education system. Considering the four systems together, about 38% of the United Kingdom population has a university or college degree, which is the highest percentage in Europe, and among the highest percentages in the world. The United Kingdom trails only the United States in terms of representation on lists of top 100 universities. A government commission's report in 2014 found that privately educated people comprise 7% of the general population of the UK but much larger percentages of the top professions, the most extreme case quoted being 71% of senior judges. In 2018, more than 57,000 children were being homeschooled in the United Kingdom. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 2 England Whilst education in England is the responsibility of the Secretary of State for Education, the day-to-day -day administration and funding of state schools is the responsibility of local authorities. Universally free of charge state education was introduced piecemeal between 1870 and 1944. Education is now mandatory from ages 5 to 16, and in England youngsters must stay in education or training until they are 18. In 2011, the trends in international mathematics and science study rated 13 14-year-old pupils in England and Wales 10th in the world for maths and 9th for science. The majority of children are educated in state sector schools, a small proportion of which select on the grounds of academic ability. Two of the top 10 performing schools in terms of GCSE results in 2006 were state-run grammar schools. In 2010, over half of places at the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge were taken by students from state schools, while the proportion of children in England attending private schools is around 7%, which rises to 18% of those over 16. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 3 Scotland Education in Scotland is the responsibility of the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning, with day-to-day -day administration and funding of state schools the responsibility of local authorities. Two non-departmental public bodies have key roles in Scottish education. The Scottish Qualifications Authority is responsible for the development, accreditation, assessment and certification of qualifications other than degrees which are delivered at secondary schools, post-secondary colleges of further education and other centres. Learning and Teaching Scotland provides advice, resources and staff development to education professionals. Scotland first legislated for compulsory education in 1496. 
The proportion of children in Scotland attending private schools is just over 4% in 2016, but it has been falling slowly in recent years. Scottish students who attend Scottish universities pay neither tuition fees nor graduate endowment charges, as fees were abolished in 2001 and the graduate endowment scheme was abolished in 2008. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 4 Wales The Welsh Government's Minister for Education has responsibility for education in Wales. State-funded education is available to children from the age of three whilst the legal obligation for parents to have their children educated, usually at school, begins at age five. A significant proportion of pupils are educated in Welsh whilst the rest are obliged to study the language until the age of 16. Wales performance in PISA testing which compares the academic performance of adolescents around the world has improved in recent years but remains lower than other parts of the UK. In 2019, just under 60% of entrants passed their main English and maths GCSEs. The obligation to receive education in Wales ends at the age of 16. In 2017 and 2018, just under 80% of 16 to 18 and just under 40% of 19 to 24 year olds were in some kind of education or training. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 5 Northern Ireland Education in Northern Ireland is the responsibility of the Minister of Education, although responsibility at a local level is administered by the Education Authority which is further subdivided into five geographical areas. The Council for the Curriculum, Examinations and Assessment is the body responsible for advising the government on what should be taught in Northern Ireland schools, monitoring standards and awarding qualifications. Chapter 6, Section 6, Health Health care in the United Kingdom is a devolved matter and each country has its own system of private and publicly funded health care. Public health care is provided to all UK permanent residents and is mostly free at the point of need, being paid for from general taxation. The World Health Organization, in 2000, ranked the provision of health care in the United Kingdom, as 15th best in Europe and 18th in the world. Since 1979 expenditure on health care has been increased significantly. The UK spends around 8.4% of its gross domestic product on healthcare, which is 0.5 percentage points below the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development average. Regulatory bodies are organised on a UK wide basis, such as the General Medical Council, the Nursing and Midwifery Council, and non governmental based, such as the Royal Colleges. Political and operational responsibility for healthcare lies with four national executives. Healthcare in England is the responsibility of the UK government, healthcare in Northern Ireland is the responsibility of the Northern Ireland executive, healthcare in Scotland is the responsibility of the Scottish government, and healthcare in Wales is the responsibility of the Welsh government. Each national health service has different policies and priorities, resulting in contrasts. Chapter 7, Culture The culture of the United Kingdom, has been influenced by many factors including, the nation's island status, its history as a Western liberal democracy and a major power, as well as being a political union of four countries with each preserving elements of distinctive traditions, customs and symbolism. As a result of the British Empire, British influence can be observed in the language, culture and legal systems of many of its former colonies including Australia, Canada, India, Ireland, New Zealand, Pakistan, South Africa and the United States, a common culture coined today as the Anglosphere. The substantial cultural influence of the United Kingdom, has led it to be described as a cultural superpower. A global opinion poll for the BBC saw the United Kingdom ranked the third most positively viewed nation in the world in 2013 and 2014. Chapter 7 Section 1, Literature British literature refers to literature associated with the United Kingdom, the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands. Most British literature is in the English language. In 2005, some 206,000 books were published in the United Kingdom and in 2000, 
and 6 it was the largest publisher of books in the world. The English playwright and poet William Shakespeare is widely regarded as the greatest dramatist of all time. The 20th century English crime writer Agatha Christie is the best selling novelist of all time. 12 of the top 25 of 100 novels by British writers chosen by a BBC poll of global critics were written by women, these included works by George Eliot, Virginia Woolf, Charlotte, and Emily Bronte, Mary Shelley, Jane Austen, Doris Lessing, and Zadie Smith. Scotland's contributions include Arthur Conan Doyle, Sir Walter Scott, J. M. Barry, Robert Louis Stevenson, and the poet Robert Burns. More recently Hugh MacDiarmid and Neil M. Gunn contributed to the Scottish Renaissance, with grimmer works from Ian Rankin and Ian Banks. Scotland's capital, Edinburgh, was UNESCO's first worldwide city of literature. Britain's oldest known poem, A Gordorvin, was composed most likely in the late 6th century. It was written in Cumbric or Old Welsh and contains the earliest known reference to King Arthur. The Arthurian legend was further developed by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Poet David Ap Gwilym is regarded as one of the greatest European poets of his age. Daniel Owen is credited as the first Welsh language novelist, publishing Rhys Lewis in 1885. The best known of the Anglo Welsh poets are Dylan Thomas and R. S. Thomas, the latter nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1996. Leading Welsh novelists of the 20th century include Richard Llewellyn and Kate Roberts. Irish writers, living at a time when all of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom, include Oscar Wilde, Bram Stoker, and George Bernard Shaw. There have been a number of authors whose origins were from outside the United Kingdom, but who moved to the UK. These include Joseph Conrad, T. S. Eliot, Kazuo Ishiguro, Sir Salman Rushdie, and Ezra Pound. Chapter 7 Section 2 Music Various styles of music are popular in the UK, including the indigenous folk music of England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Exceptional Renaissance and Baroque composers from the 16th and 17th centuries include Thomas Tallis, William Byrd, Orlando Gibbons, John Dowland, Henry Purcell, and Thomas Arne. After moving to London under the reign of Keen Anne, George Friedrich Handel became a naturalised British citizen in 1727, when he composed the anthem Zadok the Priest for the coronation of George II, it became the traditional ceremonial music for anointing all future monarchs. Many of Handel's best-known works, such as Messiah, were written in the English language. Notable 19th and 20th century British composers include Edward Elgar, Hubert Parry, Gustav Holst, Arthur Sullivan, Ralph Vaughan Williams, William Walton, Michael Tippett, and Benjamin Britten, pioneer of modern British opera. From the post-war generation, Peter Maxwell Davis, Malcolm Arnold, Harrison Birtwistle, John Rutter, John Taverner, Alan Hodinot, Thea Musgrave, Judith Weir, James Macmillan, Mark Anthony Turnage, George Benjamin, Thomas Aids and Paul Mealer have been amongst the foremost composers. The UK is also home to world-renowned symphonic orchestras and choruses such as the BBC Symphony Orchestra and the London Symphony Chorus. Notable British conductors include Sir Henry Wood, Sir John Barbaroli, Sir Malcolm Sargent, Sir Charles Groves, Sir Charles McCarris and Sir Simon Rattle, at the same time international conductors, not British-born, like Georg, Schulte and Bernard Heiting, have become at the forefront in Britain for performances of symphonic music and opera. Some of the notable film score composers include John Barry, Clint Mansell, Mike Oldfield, John Powell, Craig Armstrong, David Arnold, John Murphy, Monty Norman, and Harry Gregson Williams. Andrew Lloyd Webber is a prolific composer of musical theatre. His works have dominated London's West End since the late 20th century and have also been a commercial success worldwide. According to the website of the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, the term pop music originated in Britain in the mid 1950s to describe rock and roll's fusion with the new youth music. The Oxford Dictionary of Music states that artists such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones drove pop music to the forefront of popular music in the early 1960s. In the following years, 
Britain widely occupied a part in the development of rock music, with British acts pioneering hard rock, raga rock, art rock, heavy metal, space rock, glam rock, new wave, gothic rock, and ska punk. In addition, British acts developed progressive rock, psychedelic rock, and punk rock. Besides rock music, British acts also developed neo-soul and created dubstep. The Beatles have international sales of over 1 billion units and are the biggest selling and most influential band in the history of popular music. Other prominent British contributors to have influenced popular music over the last 50 years include the Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, Queen, Led Zeppelin, the Bee Gees, and Elton John, all of whom have worldwide record sales of 200 million or more. The Brit Awards are the BPI's annual music awards, and some of the British recipients of the Outstanding Contribution to Music Award include, The Who, David Bowie, Eric Clapton, Rod Stewart, The Police, and Fleetwood Mac. More recent UK music acts that have had international success include George Michael, Oasis, Spice Girls, Radiohead, Coldplay, Arctic Monkeys, Robbie Williams, Amy Winehouse, Adele, Ed Sheeran, One Direction, and Harry Styles. A number of UK cities are known for their music. Acts from Liverpool have had 54 UK chart number one hit singles, more per capita than any other city worldwide. Glasgow's contribution to music was recognised in 2008 when it was named a UNESCO City of Music. Manchester played a role in the spread of dance music such as Acid House, and from the mid 1990s, Britpop. London and Bristol are closely associated with the origins of electronic music subgenres such as drum and bass and trip hop. Pop remains the most popular music genre by sales and streams of singles, with 33.4% of that market in 2016, followed by hip hop and R&B at 24.5%. Rock is not far behind, at 22.6%. The modern UK is known to produce some of the most prominent English-speaking rappers along with the United States, including Stormzy, Kano, Young Bane, Rams, and Skepta. Chapter 7 Section 3 – Visual Art The history of British visual art forms part of Western art history. Major British artists include, the Romantics William Blake, John Constable, Samuel Palmer and J. M. W. Turner, the portrait painters Sir Joshua Reynolds and Lucian Freud, the landscape artists Thomas Gainsborough and L. S. Lowry, the pioneer of the arts and crafts movement William Morris, the figurative painter Francis Bacon, the pop artists Peter Blake, Richard Hamilton and David Hockey, the pioneers of conceptual art movement art and language, the collaborative duo Gilbert and George, the abstract artist Howard Hodgkin, and the sculptors Anthony Gormley, Arnish Kapoor, and Henry Moore. During the late 1980s and 1990s the Saatchi Gallery in London helped to bring to public attention a group of multi-genre artists who would become known as the Young British Artists, Damien Hirst, Chris Ophelia, Rachel Whiteread, Tracy Emin, Mark Wallinger, Steve McQueen, Sam Taylorwood and the Chapman Brothers are among the better known members of this loosely affiliated movement. The Royal Academy in London is a key organisation for the promotion of the visual arts in the United Kingdom. Major schools of art in the UK include, the Sixth School University of the Arts London, which includes the Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design and Chelsea College of Art and Design, Goldsmiths, University of London, the Slade School of Fine Art, the Glasgow School of Art, the Royal College of Art, and the Ruskin School of Drawing and Fine Art. The Courtauld Institute of Art is a leading centre for the teaching of the history of art. Important art galleries in the United Kingdom include the National Gallery, National Portrait Gallery, Tate Britain and Tate Modern. Chapter 7 Section 4 – Cinema The United Kingdom has had a considerable influence on the history of the cinema. The British director's Alfred Hitchcock, whose film Vertigo is considered by some critics as the best film of all time, and David Lean are among the most critically acclaimed of all time. Many British actors have achieved international fame and critical success. Some of the most commercially successful films of all time have been produced in the United Kingdom, including two of the highest-grossing film franchises. 
Ealing Studios has a claim to being the oldest continuously working film studio in the world. In 2009, British films grossed around $2 billion worldwide and achieved a market share of around 7% globally and 17% in the United Kingdom. UK box office takings totaled £944 million in 2009, with around 173 million admissions. The annual British Academy Film Awards are hosted by the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. Chapter 7 Section 5 Cuisine British cuisine developed from various influences reflective of its land, settlements, arrivals of new settlers and immigrants, trade and colonialism. Celtic agriculture and animal breeding produced a wide variety of foodstuffs for indigenous Celts and Britons. Anglo-Saxon England developed meat and savoury herb stewing techniques before the practice became common in Europe. The Norman conquest introduced exotic spices into England in the Middle Ages. The British Empire facilitated a knowledge of Indian cuisine with its strong, penetrating spices and herbs. British cuisine has absorbed the cultural influence of those who have settled in Britain, producing many hybrid dishes, such as the Anglo-Indian chicken tikka masala. Vegan and vegetarian diets have increased in Britain in recent years. In 2021, a survey found that 8% of British respondents eat a plant-based diet and 36% of respondents have a favourable view of plant-based diets. Chapter 7 Section 6 – Media The BBC, founded in 1922, is the UK's publicly funded radio, television and internet broadcasting corporation, and is the oldest and largest broadcaster in the world. It operates numerous television and radio stations in the UK and abroad and its domestic services are funded by the television license. Other major players in the UK media include ITV PLC, which operates 11 of the 15 regional television broadcasters that make up the ITV network, and News Corporation, which owns a number of national newspapers through News International such as the most popular tabloid The Sun and the longest established daily broadsheet The Times, as well as holding a large stake in satellite broadcaster British Sky Broadcasting until 2018. London dominates the media sector in the UK, national newspapers and television and radio are largely based there, although Manchester is also a significant national media centre. Edinburgh and Glasgow, and Cardiff, are important centres of newspaper and broadcasting production in Scotland and Wales, respectively. The UK publishing sector, including books, directories and databases, journals, magazines and business media, newspapers and news agencies, has a combined turnover of around £20 billion and employs around 167,000 people. In 2015, the UK published 2,710 book titles per million inhabitants, more than any other country, much of this being exported to other Anglophone countries. In 2009, it was estimated that individuals viewed a mean of 3.75 hours of television per day and 2.81 hours of radio. In that year, the main BBC public service broadcasting channels accounted for an estimated 28.4% of all television viewing. The three main independent channels accounted for 29.5% and the increasingly important other satellite and digital channels for the remaining 42.1%. Sales of newspapers have fallen since the 1970s and in 2010 41% of people reported reading a daily national newspaper. In 2010, 82.5% of the UK population were internet users, the highest proportion amongst the 20 countries with the largest total number of users in that year. Chapter 7 Section 7 Philosophy The United Kingdom is famous for the tradition of British empiricism, a branch of the philosophy of knowledge that states that only knowledge verified by experience is valid, and Scottish philosophy, sometimes referred to as the Scottish school of common sense. The most famous philosophers of British empiricism are John Locke, George Berkeley and David Hume, while Dougald Stewart, Thomas Reed and William Hamilton were major exponents of the Scottish Common Sense School. Two Britons are also notable for the ethical theory of utilitarianism, 
a moral philosophy first used by Jeremy Bentham and later by John Stuart Mill in his short work Utilitarianism. Chapter 7 Section 8, Sport Association Football, Tennis, Table Tennis, Badminton, Rugby Union, Rugby League, Rugby Sevens, Golf, Boxing, Netball, Water Polo, Field Hockey, Billiards, Darts, Rowing, Rounders and cricket originated or were substantially developed in the UK, with the rules and codes of many modern sports invented and codified in the late 19th century Victorian Britain. In 2012, the president of the IOC, Jack Rogg, stated, This great, sports-loving country is widely recognized as the birthplace of modern sport. It was here the concepts of sportsmanship and fair play were first codified into clear rules and regulations. It was here that sport was included as an educational tool in the school curriculum. A 2003 poll found that football is the most popular sport in the United Kingdom. England is recognized by FIFA as the birthplace of club football, and the Football Association is the oldest of its kind, with the rules of football first drafted in 1863 by Ebenezer Cobb Morley. Each of the home nations has its own football association, national team and league system, and individually are the governing members of the International Football Association board alongside FIFA. The English top division, the Premier League, is the most watched football league in the world. The first international football match was contested by England and Scotland on 30 November 1872. England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland usually compete as separate countries in international competitions. In 2003, rugby union was ranked the second most popular sport in the UK. The sport was created in rugby school, Warwickshire, and the first rugby international took place on 27 March 1871 between England and Scotland. England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, France and Italy compete in the Six Nations Championship, the premier international tournament in the Northern Hemisphere. Sport governing bodies in England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland organise and regulate the game separately. Every four years, England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales make a combined team known as the British and Irish Lions. The team tours Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Cricket was invented in England, and its laws were established by the Marylebone Cricket Club in 1788. The England cricket team, controlled by the England and Wales Cricket Board, and the Irish cricket team, controlled by Cricket Ireland are the only national teams in the UK with test status. Team members are drawn from the main county sides, and include both English and Welsh players. Cricket is distinct from football and rugby where Wales and England field separate national teams, although Wales had fielded its own team in the past. Scottish players have played for England because Scotland does not have test status, and has only recently started to play in one-day internationals. Scotland, England, and Ireland have competed at the Cricket World Cup, with England winning the tournament in 2019. There is a professional league championship in which clubs representing 17 English counties and one Welsh county compete. The modern game of tennis originated in Birmingham, England, in the 1860s, before spreading around the world. The world's oldest tennis tournament, the Wimbledon Championships, first occurred in 1877, and today the event takes place over two weeks in late June and early July. The UK is closely associated with motorsport. Many teams and drivers in Formula One are based in the UK, and the country has won more drivers and constructors' titles than any other. The UK hosted the first F1 Grand Prix in 1950 at Silverstone, the location of the British Grand Prix held each year in July. Golf is the sixth most popular sport, by participation, in the UK. Although the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews in Scotland is the sport's home course, the world's oldest golf course is actually Musselburgh Link's old golf course. In 1764, the standard 18-hole golf course was created at St Andrews when members modified the course from 22 to 18 holes. The oldest golf tournament in the world, 
and the first major championship in golf, the Open Championship, is played annually on the weekend of the third Friday in July. Rugby league originated in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire in 1895 and is generally played in Northern England. A single Great Britain Lions team had competed in the Rugby League World Cup and Test match games, but this changed in 2008 when England, Scotland and Ireland competed as separate nations. Great Britain is still retained as the full national team. Super League is the highest level of professional rugby league in the UK and Europe. It consists of 11 teams from Northern England, and one each from London, Wales, and France. The Queensbury Rules, the Code of General Rules in Boxing, was named after John Douglas, 9th Marquess of Queensbury in 1867, and formed the basis of modern boxing. Snooker is another of the UK's popular sporting exports, with the World Championships held annually in Sheffield. In Northern Ireland, Gaelic football and hurling are popular team sports, both in terms of participation and spectating. Irish expatriates in the UK and the US also play them. Shinty is popular in the Scottish Highlands. Highland games are held in spring and summer in Scotland, celebrating Scottish and Celtic culture and heritage, especially that of the Scottish Highlands. Chapter 7 Section 9 Symbols The flag of the United Kingdom is the Union flag. It was created in 1606 by the superimposition of the flag of England, representing St. George, on the flag of Scotland, representing St. Andrew, and was updated in 1801 with the addition of St. Patrick's flag. Wales is not represented in the Union flag, as Wales had been conquered and annexed to England prior to the formation of the United Kingdom. The possibility of redesigning the Union flag to include representation of Wales has not been completely ruled out. The national anthem of the United Kingdom is God Save the Queen, with Queen replaced with King in the lyrics whenever the monarch is a man. Britannia is a national personification of the United Kingdom, originating from Roman Britain. Britannia is symbolized as a young woman with brown or golden hair, wearing a Corinthian helmet and white robes. She holds Poseidon's three-pronged trident and a shield, bearing the Union flag. Beside the lion, and the unicorn and the dragon of heraldry, the bulldog is an iconic animal and commonly represented with the Union Jack. It has been associated with Winston Churchill's defiance of Nazi Germany. A now rare personification is a character originating in the 18th century, John Bull, a portly country gentleman dressed in a top hat and tailcoat with a Union Jack waistcoat, often accompanied by a bulldog. The floral emblems of the three kingdoms are the Tudor Rose for England, the Thistle for Scotland, and the Shamrock for Northern Ireland, they are sometimes shown intertwined to represent unity. The daffodil and the leek are the symbols of Wales. Alternatives include the Royal Oak for England, and the Flax Flower for Northern Ireland. Chapter 7 Section 10, Government Official Website of Home Government Official Website of the British Monarchy The Official Site of the British Prime Minister's Office Chapter 7 Section 11, General Information United Kingdom from the BBC News United Kingdom The World Factbook Central Intelligence Agency United Kingdom from UCB Libraries Gov. Pubs. United Kingdom at Curley. United Kingdom Encyclopedia, Britannica Entry. Wikimedia Atlas of United Kingdom. Geographic, data related to United Kingdom at Open. Street, Map. Key development forecasts for the United Kingdom, from International Futures. Chapter 7 Section 12, Travel Official Tourist Guide to Britain